there's been a big problem with some people who have been trading in their phones to Samsung. What do I mean by that? Well, if you pre-ordered or you bought a new Samsung Galaxy S23 a Plus, an Ultra, whatever, from the Samsung website, you have to trade your phone in. You have to send it in to them. You have two weeks after you buy the phone. They give you a FedEx shipping label that shows up in your email. You can use the same box they sent you. It's actually a pretty simple and streamlined process. However, some people, their phones have been getting to Samsung, and then they're getting a notice from Samsung saying that there's something wrong with the phone. It's damaged. It doesn't meet the criteria. And then basically saying, we'll give you this much money for it, or we can send the phone back to you, but we're not giving you the full amount. And of course, the full amount's not as much as it has been in the past, right? But still, if you traded it in, you wanted to do it under the pretense of what was offered. And I'm going to tell you how you can avoid doing that. So if you haven't sent your phone off yet, or if you're planning on buying something from Samsung, this is a really important video for you to watch. I probably should have let off with that, but you know me, long-winded, all that jazz. So what can you do to try and make sure this doesn't happen to you? One, the first thing you wanna do is take pictures and video clips of the phone before you send it in. And I would highly encourage that you go into the settings and pull it up where you can see the IMEI. That way they cannot dispute that you sent it in in ABC XYZ condition. What you wanna do is get a piece of paper, write the, put a timestamp on it, time and date stamp. So basically, let's say if you were sending it in today, today is the 22nd of February. Just write 22nd February, put the time on there, and then start recording. Take some pictures or put that little piece of paper in the picture that you have. That way you can save it for your records in the event that they reach out to you and say, hey, there's something wrong with your trade-in. You can go, no, it was in this condition. I sent it to you like this. This is what it was like before it got to you. I don't know what happened once it got to you. I don't know if you folks dropped it on the floor when you were getting ready to check it out to exchange it for my new phone for me, but this is not a me problem. So that's one way you can get around, try and get around doing that. And I've done this in the past before. I've taken pictures and video because I'm paranoid. And I've gotten a little less paranoid over the years because I've been buying stuff. Man, I've been buying stuff from Samsung for years. And I've never had an issue. But I know it seems like every time we do this whole rigmarole, somebody or some select group of people have this problem and you want to avoid that. It just takes a couple of minutes, get a little piece of note paper, tear it off, write the, the time and the date stamp on there, and then take some photos of what it looks like, screen turned on, screen off, IMEI, and show that it works, that the screen comes on, it's not damaged. So that's one thing you can do to cover yourself. The other thing you can do is to make sure you package it well. So I know some people are like, look, they just gave me the FedEx label, I don't care, I'm just throwing it in a plastic bag and dropping it in the mailbox. You wanna put it in something that's gonna ensure a very high probability that it gets there in the condition that you sent it in. You don't want to deal with this headache once it gets there because then you got to fight with them. You got to say, no, it wasn't like this. Here's my evidence. If you send it in just like a bubbled plastic wrapper, there's a high probability going through the mail that somebody who's just not having a good day throws it somewhere. There's probably not a fragile sticker on it. There's probably not a lithium battery sticker on it. Like, you don't know. So make sure whenever you send it off, my recommendation is to use the box they sent it to you because the box they sent you the phone in already has packaging in it. It already has the box. It's already a pretty good size. And also I recommend putting it in the original box if you still have that. Some people hang on to them forever like me. Whenever I have a phone, until I get rid of that phone, I usually keep it. I've got a special place in the closet where I save all these. Well, I got a lot of boxes, like a whole bunch. Just I don't want to talk about it. My wife's going to start beating me again. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just joking. She only does that on Saturday. But whenever it comes to sending it off, yes, if you've got the original box, that's great. If you don't have the box, don't worry about it. Wrap it up as best you can and then send it off. Or find a makeshift box, something just to protect it to ensure that once it shows up at Samsung, that there's no question that, one, you didn't send it and make sure it was packaged properly. There's no chance it could get damaged. And then when they get it there, if they have any issues, you never know what happens. Like once it leaves your house and it goes in the mail, <laughs> Hopefully everything works out the way that it's supposed to when it gets there, right? But yes, package it up, package it properly, put it in the mail, and cover yourself. Make sure you get some sort of record. Most importantly, at a minimum, take a picture of the front and the back and make sure you take a picture with the screen turned on with the IMEI. Otherwise, if you don't take them with the, the screen on in the IMEI, they could say, oh, that's any that's any photo. That, like, that's any camera that you have or any, any phone that you have, right? And if you don't do a time and a date stamp, they can be like, oh, well, you took that today with some other phone. Maybe you've got two. Maybe it was your wife's phone. Who knows, right? 
So you want to take out as much area for question as you possibly can. And this is not a huge issue. Uh, it happens some onesies and twosies. It's not a widespread problem, at least that I know of. But this happens basically with everyone. This could be some good information, whether it's Apple, whether it's Google. I know Google had a lot of problems. Some people were having issues with them not getting the right trade in value. That was something that was popping up in the Reddit forums and people were complaining about it. So you never know. Anytime you do a pre-order, anytime you do an online order and they require you to do a trade in, follow these basic steps. And this should cover you really, really well to make sure that you minimize any potential issues by making sure it got shipped there, it showed up the way you intended it to, and then you've got proof that it was in good condition when you mailed it off. So that's all I've got. I really hope you can't hear too much stuff in the background. I'm in New York City right now. I was here for an event. I'm getting ready to go to Barcelona or to Spain for MWC in a couple of days. So I'm going to be filming on location basically for the next week until I get back into the Tech Odyssey studio in my garage at my house. So Hopefully you like the change of pace. I brought my little portable light with me. I've got my tripod. I've got all my stuff. It's very loud here. They've been doing construction pretty much 24 seven outside my window. So if you hear a buzzsaw in the background, this I'm not making a saw movie in the background. It's the guys out in the street doing their hard earned job. So that's all I've got. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this gives you some security and peace of mind and gives you a strategy for making sure this doesn't happen to you. And then you can enjoy your new phone and also I'm really liking mine a lot. If you're curious what this is, it's a cryo armor case from Spigen. It's about 20 bucks on Amazon. They didn't send this to me. I bought it with my own money. I've been using it for like three or four days now. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Nice silicone case. It's got the little thermal tiles here that allow for air to go through so that way you get the good ventilation around your phone. There's a little graphite, I think it's graphite, pad on the inside of it that helps wick away the heat from your phone as well. So anyway, that's all I've got. Just want to say I like this. Link in the description if you're curious. That's all I got. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, if this happened to you, if you have any good words of advice, please go to the comment section. We'll discuss it there. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.